Hello, my name is Austin Losada, and I am the Andrew W. Mellon postgraduate intern at the Zimmerly Art Museum. Since we are not allowing visitors in our museum currently, I wanted to take you on a virtual tour of our exhibition titled, It Makes Me Think of That Awful Day, The Natural World in the Anthropocene. This exhibition brings together several works by contemporary artists that use the natural world as a source of inspiration and as a means in which they try to understand humankind's place within it. Some artists reference the problems of a specific location, like the fragile ecosystem of the El Yunque rainforest in Puerto Rico, while others combine synthetic materials and natural motifs to make a broader environmental critique. While artists of all centuries have represented nature as a vehicle to talk about or avoid the perils of industrialization and environmental degradation, these artworks grapple and envision our current world, defined by rapid climate change, mass extinction, and ecological shifts brought on by the burning of fossil fuels and disruptive development. These realities have led some to term our current geological epoch the Anthropocene, or Age of Man, and the works featured in this exhibition suggest that there is no such thing as an untouched, unmediated natural world. The title of the exhibition comes from this 2011 lithograph titled, It Makes Me Think of That Awful Day on the Island by Walton Ford. The title references the 1933 Hollywood classic King Kong, in which a film crew captures the eponymous giant gorilla on an island and brings him back to New York. Rather than depicting Kong as the frightful monster menacing a beautiful starlit scene in the film, Ford depicts Kong in the middle of a tearful cry, beset by romantic rejection and the loss of his island home. Such subversions are frequently found in Ford's work, as he is known for skillfully employing a style reminiscent of 19th century naturalists who use detailed drawings of organisms to classify, understand, and control the natural world. In opposition to his predecessors, this print offers an empathetic perspective of a grief-filled Kong due to the destruction and greed of man. Ford's print is one of eight works belonging to the Social Environmental Aesthetics Portfolio by Exit Art. The works in this portfolio are dedicated to the El Yunque National Rainforest in Puerto Rico, the only rainforest in North America. A protected region with tremendous biodiversity, El Yunque is also home to many endangered species, including the Iguaca, a parrot native to the island. Iguaca by Alex Rockman represents the parrot in a striking neon orange, isolated in the composition, sitting on a severed branch and backdropped by nothing but the white paper the subject is printed on. Through this presentation, Rockman draws attention to the Iguaca's dire situation as it faces extinction and loss of habitat. Both Ford's and Rockman's approach to representing melancholy and loss are notable ways that artists interpret and tackle the themes of our current ecological moment. Yet other artists, like the Boyle family, offer a detached exploration of the new forms and materials that emerge from our human-centric environment. In Cobble's study with tire tracks, earth, stones, and glass from 1976, the Boyle family recreates a familiar fragment from everyday life that often goes unnoticed. Upon first glance, the work convinces the viewer that they are looking at an actual excavated section of the earth, depicting a low-relief brick path at the lower left of the composition, tire tracks at the upper right, and shards of glass, fragments of rocks, and pieces of metal scattered on its surface throughout. In actuality, the work is primarily made of resin and fiberglass, containing only several mixed-media elements. Rather than reshaping the world to fit into a specific style, the Boyle family strives to present the earth as it is. In doing so, the ground that Cobble study replicates is an actual location, a lorry park 
or truck stop, where the mark of human intervention is undeniably present. Using synthetic materials, their work calls to mind the layers of pressurized, non-biodegradable plastics that are slowly forming a new sedentary layer for the Earth. Although the Boyle family do not view their work as an environmental critique, viewing it in this context complicates artists' representations of the natural world. Similar to the site-specific approach of the Boyle family's work, Robert Loeb's Angel from 1988 emerged from his direct experience in nature. Just as 19th century artists trekked through and painted the landscapes along the Hudson River, Angel replicates a severed tree trunk and a large slab of shale that the artist encountered during a hike near White Lake in upstate New York. Using sheets of manufactured aluminum, Loeb encases his subject and captures their shape, surface, and texture using pneumatic tools, a technique known as repoussé. The result is a hollowed out wall relief that relocates the skin of the tree and shale into the gallery space. Like the Boyle family, Loeb's use of manufactured materials underscores the way that our personal encounters with nature are marked by recontextualization as much as rapid industrial progress. And while the Boyle family and Loeb created their works from personal encounters with the environment around them, for the average person, our experience of or knowledge about nature's devastation often occurs at a distance. On August 5, 2010, roughly one quarter of the tongue of the Peterman Glacier, which runs along Greenland's northwestern coast, broke off and floated into the sea. Its loss signaled dramatic change, alarming scientists monitoring global warming. The images of this event captured by NASA satellites made the impact of climate change visible to a wider audience, and Diane Burko, herself unnerved at the scale of the loss, modeled her painting on a published image of the event. Part of her long-running series, The Politics of Snow, this painting used satellite imagery as the model for its composition. And with its mesmerizing composition imbued with vivid colors and drama, Burko effectively short circuits the impulse to turn away from climate catastrophe. The photographer Edward Bertinsky is well known for his captivating large format works depicting landscapes affected by industrialization. Bertinsky's Carrera Marble Quarries, number 21, from 1993, provides a strikingly beautiful view of the damage left by our ceaseless demand for natural resources. This quarry in Carrera, Italy, is known as a source of marble used by Renaissance architects and sculptors, and despite its illustrious uses throughout history, are now commonly used for the backsplashes, floors, and countertops of homes throughout the world. In this work, Bertinsky zooms in on the sharp geometries and varied textures of the Carrera marble, inviting the viewer to consider how the extractive process itself creates a kind of sculpture. Represented by two sculptures in this exhibition, Christy Rupp's Spill and Turtle Skeleton offer pointed commentary on the environmental devastation caused by offshore oil drilling and the acceleration of species extinction due to human consumption and development. For Spill, Rupp transforms a discarded oil barrel into a giant shell. Displayed like a rare treasure in a natural history museum, Spill's light-hearted premise quickly gives way to the reality of oil spill disasters that devastate entire marine ecosystems. The renowned art critic Lucy R. Lepard offered a keen insight into Rupp's unique approach, saying, quote, On the initial encounter, Rupp's sculptures are attractively endearing. On second glance, they are often grisly, even tragic, 
Beneath her humor lurks a knowledgeable and enduring anger at the loss or rejections of so many gifts from nature." Unquote. This is certainly true of Spill and Turtle Skeleton, the latter of which belongs to a body of work that features animal fossils and skeletons. In one related series, she uses the bones of chickens served at fast food restaurants to create intricate paleontology models of extinct and endangered birds. For Turtle Skeleton, Rupp molded the subject from clay, yet her attention to detail, like the animal's long nails for example, lends the skeleton a visceral realism. This play with authenticity adds pathos to its somber message. While the term Anthropocene is flawed, for example, it implies that all people are equally responsible for the current crisis, the overarching idea of a new set of environmental realities resonates with many artists. And while artists have long trained their eyes on the natural world, now more than ever, the arts can represent the perceptible impressions we are leaving on the environment. Thank you so much for coming on this tour with me, and I look forward to seeing you all at the Zimmerly Art Museum in the near future.